Hi there, and let's get to it. In film compositing, a mat is a black and white image or video used as a reference for your media. The reference pertains to visibility, in which white represents visible aspects or full opacity, and black represents invisible or transparency. Everything in between, or grayscale, is considered various degrees of semi-opacity. Now, we've actually already been working with mats this whole time. Anytime you use the qualifier tool or the power windows, you're generating a black and white reference image for your node to use. But you can also import your own mats. This is especially useful if you are compositing visual effects images that have been generated by someone else in a program like Nuke or After Effects, and you want to composite or blend them seamlessly into your own timeline. A common visual effects workflow is to send over your EDL and your raw video materials to the visual effects artist. Sometimes the video materials are consolidated so that the compositor doesn't have to worry about placing the in and out points themselves, but the video already comes pre-cut. And they will do their thing, which involves tracking the video and introducing a layer with whatever visual effects they were tasked to do. And sometimes this will not even be in its final composite mode, so in this case we have a bit of screen replacement that still needs to be blended in and color corrected by the colorist. You can sometimes export just the visual effects element with a black background. In this case, the original footage was included, but that's okay because we're going to be using this black and white reference mat to isolate the screen replacement. I could either add this segment by drag and dropping it into my media pool, or I can select the VFX clip that it pertains to, right click, and add to media pool as matte. That way it won't appear in the media pool in any way, but if I was to switch over to list mode, I'll reveal that this clip now comes with an associated matte file, and that's really good. So now when I head over to the edit, I can either replace it with the DPX image sequence containing the RGB values of the visual effects directly on top of it, or I can drag and drop it onto a separate video track. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to overwrite it completely and head over to the color page. So I've got my screen replacement already integrated into the footage, but it doesn't look quite right yet because it's too sharp and too bright. So I'd like to isolate this area and clean it up a bit before I continue compositing. What I'm going to do is make a serial node and then right click on it and add a mat. This will reveal all my mat options for that clip. In this case, it's also including the original DPX sequence, but what I'm interested in is this Luma TIFF sequence. If I had imported any mats without affiliating them with a specific clip in the media pool, these would show up in this list as well. When I make that selection, my external mat appears in a node already labeled as external mat, and the first key is fed to the key input of this second node. So if I was to desaturate the node, you can see that's already affecting the monitor and the screen replacement. I can also, I think, make it a bit yellower, a bit less contrasted, and introduce a bit of blur. And I'll also give it a label. And after that, I can just continue making more serial nodes or any kind of mixer nodes and continue working on my scene as a whole. Now, the external mat has five outputs. The top four blue triangles represent RGBY. So that means it represents every color channel plus the luminance channel. If you wanted to, you could essentially export a unique key for each channel and control them all independently. At the bottom, you also have an RGB output, like one of these green dots. That means that you can feed this black and white image into another node. It's a pretty specific application, but I hope that's what you're starting to appreciate about DaVinci Resolve is that it is a very specific software. So in this case, I could choose to direct the RGB data from this black and white screen, after which you can then composite it into the image above. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this. Maybe you want to get a bit of flicker going on. That's like the only practical application I can think of right now. But there it is. We're able to successfully juggle the inputs and outputs of various nodes to build up a successful composite. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.